Warframe has gone through a ton of changes since its open beta launched on March 25th in 2013. Digital Extremes has done an amazing job updating, improving, and adding to the game for over five years. We always appreciate changes like the rework and the long-standing Melee 2.0, the removing of useless abilities like Excalibur Super Jump, but sometimes something we liked about Warframe ends up on the chopping block. Hi, I'm your host, Alpha Lance with the leaderboard, and today we're going to talk Talk about the changes we miss in Warframe. Now, just a disclaimer, we love everything Digital Extremes has done for this free game. I'm never one to look a gift horse in the mouth, know that these grievances come from a place of love. Number 1. Trial Missions Raids Trial missions, aka raids, were introduced in update 16.0 on March 19th, 2015 with the Law of Retribution. They were more difficult and complex missions that featured significant higher enemy levels, special mission modifiers, and specifically modified tile sets. What made trial missions so fun were the unique mechanics and obstacles not found in any other missions. To make up for the increase in difficulty, players could form four to eight player squads to take down enemies in three separate stages. If players exhausted the revives to the point that fewer than four players were present, the trial mission would automatically fail. Like in many RPG games, raids were end game content with enemy levels in the 70s, 80s, and higher. Completion of trial missions awarded players with the most exotic prizes in the solar system, a large sum of credits, an arcane enhancement, and their own respective emblems. The Law of Retribution even came with a nightmare version for those who wanted to put their skills to the ultimate test. This was the stage that all players were preparing for as they leveled up and grinded the best weapons, all the while outfitting their weapons and equipment with more powerful mods. For close to three Three years, trial missions were a great endgame activity. But then, on March 1st, 2018, update 22.14 dropped the axe on the Law of Retribution, its Nightmare Mode, and the Jordis Verdict Trials, the second trial mission. But what about all those hard-earned, now-defunct trial keys? Well, players received an inbox message thanking them for their time and dedication, informing them that their trial keys would be taken away and refunded at least. Given that these keys' blueprints cost about 100,000 credits each, the refund was worth it. That's really nice, Digital Extremes, but hey, could you maybe, like, keep the credits and just give us back the trial missions instead? Whether it's World of Warcraft or Destiny 2, raids have always been talked about as these legendary experiences that put your mind and metal to the test. It can be a dedicated grinding experience you tackle with friends or something you're roped into last minute by an acquaintance on your friends list. But by the end of this quest, you and that acquaintance would be comrades in arms. As someone coming late to the Warframe party, I never got a high enough level to experience one of these legendary raids myself. But I've since read and heard stories and watched videos and they all get me so pumped about it. Sadly, all of those stories are capped with that wistful caveat of, I do miss those missions. In a post discussing the removal of the trial missions, Admin Megan, aka Ginja Ninja, states that trials have been, quote, temporarily put to rest for the time being. She assures Warframe players, quote, this is not the end to trials, and then went on to thank the players and designers who put so much time into the game type. On DevStream 75, game director at Digital Extremes Scott Sinclair mentioned Digital Extremes is, quote, looking to repurpose existing raid content to make the game mode accessible for low-level players while also preparing them for this endgame content as they continue to progress, end quote. Sounds like there's hope that trial missions will still come back. Still, we don't know what they will be when they return. While opening up this content to Warframe's players at an earlier level will allow more people to experience it, will it have the same late game gauntlet level of challenge attached to it? What will the rewards be to scale up with the player levels? Only time will tell, but for now, we miss you trial missions. Number 2. Stamina in early Warframe, your character had health, shields, and an awesome green stamina bar that really improved. <laughs> Just kidding. Nobody misses a mechanic that does nothing but limit your awesomeness and slow your gameplay down. Save that stamina nonsense for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The developers removed stamina in update 17.0 in mid-2015, and that part I do remember from the early open beta days. Yeah, no, good, good call, Digital Extremes. The for real number two, the Ultimate Warframe Pack. 
Darvo Beck, our favorite ex Corpus merchant who loves to sell us half price life support, has some pretty good deals. When my pockets are getting weighed down by platinum, I know that Darvo is happy to help me out. I won't ask whether or not he got his wares legally, we all gotta make a living. I just wanna know how he got his hands on 14 Warframes and their necessary slots for storage on my ship. On September 21st, 2013, during Update 10, Darvo sold the Ultimate Warframe Pack for 1,822 Platinum. This pack included the Warframes Meg, Trinity, Ember, Ash, Banshee, Excalibur, Frost, Loki, Nova, Saren, Nyx, Rhino, Volt, and Vobin. And of course, the necessary slots to go along with all of them. At the time, that was every Warframe available in the game except Necros. Altogether, those Warframes would normally cost you a whopping 3,000 325 platinum plus 20 extra platinum per slot assuming you only have one and let's say the Excalibur most likely that would add another 260 platinum on top of that for a grand total of 3585 platinum in value remember Darvo was selling this at 1822 platinum that's a 49 percent markdown off the market price yeah, no, this is definitely another one of Darvo's totally not evidence disposal fire flash sales. Keep in mind that when this deal was live, it was listed at 25% off. So buying all these frames at the time would have cost you about 2,429 platinum. Even at that price though, that much platinum would cost you about 120 US dollars. That is of course, if you didn't have a platinum sale going on. At 1,822 plat, Darvo was basically offering almost every Warframe in the game for 90 $99.99 USD. I mean, that's a steal. That's less than $100. Now, games with microtransactions will have deals to get players started like this. For example, both League of Legends and Heroes of the Storm at one point had starter packs that would give you eight champions from the get-go. This allows those willing to invest just a little bit more into the game get a bigger roster of options starting out. Folks can also get a head start on the eventual grind at a discounted price. Darvo just wanted to give us a chance to really cut on that grind if you think about it. In a PvE game like Warframe, that's not really a bad thing. Unless you ask them, you have no clue how players obtained a Warframe. They could have gotten really lucky in the grind, traded, or just spent platinum. And to be honest, it doesn't really change anything. Digital Extremes is giving us tons of content for free, so why not give back the ultimate way that we can show our appreciation? The ultimate pack. Maybe they could reintroduce it with a dynamic adjustment, like Heroes of the Storm, where you'll get discounts for every piece you already have in the bundle. Then as time goes on, that ultimate pack would go down in price until eventually your will breaks and your inner completionist compels you to buy it. That would mean the new ultimate Warframe pack would cost about uh, 6,750 platinum. After the 25% off, the 9,000 platinum it would cost to buy every Warframe available now. Hey, I didn't say it would be cheap and I never said you had to buy the bundle either. Maybe your will is stronger than mine. Currently, the Warframe does offer a starter pack for 1999. Instead of multiple Warframes though, it contains 300 Platinum, some boosters, mods, and cosmetics to get players started in style. Number 3. More Holiday Content Items now, this one is a slippery slope. Holiday cosmetics can be a great way to get into the holiday spirit, and giving your fans a free item or skin is a great way to get players to play the game. At the very least, it gives players something fresh during the holidays if they have nothing else to do. However, holiday outfits can look out of place, and downright silly even. The last thing Warframe needs is a goofy easter egg grenade launcher like in Fortnite. No, 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 don't get me wrong. I will totally admit that I'm glad they're not doing more skins like the Spearmint Scythe Deluxe skin. On the other hand, there is a holiday cosmetic item that Digital Extremes had out that could be a great idea to build upon. The Eros Eros Skins. Introduced in Hotfix 15.14.1, this Valentine's Day theme skin is a PC exclusive item released during the Heart of the Lotus event. Eros Eros Skins could only be acquired for a week around Valentine's Day in 2015. Unlike other skins that will stay on permanently until you equip a different skin before missions, Eros Eros Skins are consumable items you equip in your gear. Once you're in the mission, you select the Eros Eros skin like any item and voila, you're firing heart-headed arrows for the rest of the mission, leaving a trail of hollow hearts with each shot. Ah, uh, that is to say, holographic hearts, not hearts that are hollow. The Eros Eros skin can be applied to any bow or crossbow weapon at any time. 
and that beats having to run into the arsenal with each weapon during the holiday. I think this is a great compromise. Making the Eros Arrow consumable items means you have to make each one count. Sorry to break your heart, but those arrows are gonna run out eventually. While running out of arrows is a scary thought, it just makes them feel that much more exclusive. It's better to have shot heart arrows and lost than to have never shot heart arrows at all, as they always say. Besides, you can hold on to them and save them up for Christmas time. That way, you can give the same present that I give when I'm strapped for cash. The gift of love. I'm surprised we haven't gotten more holiday themed cosmetic gear yet. I mean, good for you, Digital Extreme, don't get me wrong. A St. Patrick's Day gun that fires like four leaf clover cluster bombs would be a little over the top. So far, the holiday that's gotten the most content is the Day of the Dead, and all that gear is pretty badass. I would love to see more seasonal exclusive gear like the Eros Arrow skin that's creative, but not over the top. How about like a uh, snowball that you could throw on the ground to apply a frosty texture? You could add a little winter cheer to your defense missions then. I'm sure Digital Extremes and their talented crew could come up with some more amazing fun ideas. They've done a fantastic job with Warframe for the first five years, so hey, here's to the next five. That's all for now. Keep an eye out for our other Warframe videos. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want to see more Warframe content in the future. Once again, I'm your host, Alpha Lance, with the leaderboard, and thanks for watching.